Now, when you think of a boss that had a run for decades and never did a day in jail, Carlo Gambino comes to mind. Yeah, and I'm Italians were doing their thing. You have to respect it. But tonight we're covering an African American that had longevity in a dangerous game. A guy that was well seasoned. If you look up the word hustle in the dictionary, I'm pretty sure his picture will be next to it. It was said that nobody could out hustle him. We talking about a guy that had connections from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. Yes, he operated offices on both coasts and moved effortlessly in and out of both entertainment and underworld circles. Eric Bonzit Martin. Now, shout out to the 118th Street Hustlers. Harlem, where you at? Now, just like everyone else, Zip hit the block at a young age. Jumping off the porch, he knew two things. Not everyone will survive, and everyone damn sure wasn't going to get rich. He stayed close and watched some of the well-known OGs in New York that was very successful. See, he didn't want to be like those guys respectfully. He wanted to be better, so he took notes as a student of the game. Now, eventually, he began touching so much money that he used to keep garbage bags full of $1 bills and $5 bills, and he would just give them away to his youngins. Now, you know how much money a bag full of $5 bills can be. Even a bag full of $1 bills, I'll take that. <laughs> now, in the club, he would order 50 bottles of champagne, and he would pass them out like it was nothing. Now, he had connections to celebrities like Stevie Wonder appearing at his club restaurant called The Zip Cool, connections to Diddy, Don King, Mike Tyson, Cameron, Foxy Brown, and this been said, he was an owner of his own record label at one point. Now, he knew every OG on the East Coast and almost every new kid on the block. By the time of that era, that I like to call the Peter and Fool era, you know, when Alpo and Rich and them all had their run, he was already a self-made millionaire. And being young in the game, seeing his longevity and success made him to be that someone to look up to. A lot of guys wanted to get down with him. You could soak up lots of game just being around him. Following in the footsteps of his mentor, Bumpy Johnson, he was very cautious of those in his presence. Being in the game that long, he was cautious, period. He heard all the stories and saw guys come and go. He was known to sleep with a shotgun every night and switch multiple cars in one day. He even drove around in a bulletproof Mercedes. Now, he was a very smart man with a lot of game. Super smooth, versatile. He was able to change his hustle within the times, and that's how he managed to rule Harlem's underworld on and off for decades. Now, it was said that he had a narcotics operation going out in California involving the Southside Crips. And yes, that's the same set that took out Pac. He introduced Diddy to the Crips, and apparently that was bad boy protection from death row when they came out to the West Coast. It's been alleged that the Southside Crips pulled out ratchets during the 1996 Soul Train Awards standoff between Death Row and Bad Boy. Now, it's been alleged that Diddy put some money on the heads of Shug and Pac, 500k each. Now, after the Tupac hit, Keefe D said the feds told him that Diddy had a million dollar check for him that he gave Zip, but Zip kept the money. Some say it was 500k, some say it was a million. 500k will make the most sense since Suge is still alive. Now, some say Zip took the money and purchased Zip Code. Now, you know, that was the name of his nightclub, which was a smart investment to clean the money. Now, if he intended to even give Keefe the money, I would think he would have just gave it to him in cash and used a legit paycheck for the business move. You have to remember, he's been in the game for a while. These were his young bulls. He thinks different from others, and that's what caused him to last longer than others. Now remember, it's chess, not checkers. He knew the right people to use and knew exactly how to play them. You can sit down on a business deal with him, and he'll make it sound like you're coming out on top. But little did you know, he was already steps ahead of you, and he damn sure always come out on top. It's all about winning on the back end. Now, if the check was supposed to go to Keefe D, I would assume Diddy would have told Keefe D himself. Now, it's kind of funny that he would only hear it from the feds. Now, if you ask me, it sounds like he was trying to get off on a different case. And he told the feds 
he could get them information on the Tupac hit. He allegedly met with Zip while wearing a wire and didn't even ask for the money. He said something about getting back into narcotics. And with Zip being smart as he is, he told him he's not even into that anymore, but he could hook him up with someone. Now that someone will be most likely someone that's under Zip. See, Zip played the cut. He was behind the scenes, sort of like a puppet master. He didn't trust Keefe D. Now, and I'm pretty sure Zip would ask himself, like, what was Keefe D randomly doing in New York? After the meeting, he would probably make phone calls and reach out to the guys out in Cali to see what's up with Keefe D. So, if Keefe D was the type to wear a wire to try to set one of his business associates up, I wouldn't pick going on Vlad TV and telling the lie past him. That's just me. Now, just like I said, Zip had his ears on both coasts. That's how he managed to slip out of situations. Now, here's another thing to think about. So we talked about how Zip hooked Diddy up with the Southside Crips. So who's to say that the check wasn't for Zip for providing that protection to Bad Boy? You just never know. The guy is not here to defend himself. You just have to think about what makes the most sense. Now, and I hear some guys say that he's the one that provided the gun in the Tupac incident. Like, they don't have access to weapons on the West Coast. If they're from that coast, why would they have to go to someone on a whole different coast to provide a weapon? If anything, it should be the other way around. But he would pass away in 2012 due to natural causes. He would die of cancer after battling for years in and out of the hospital. When he passed away, he left behind a fleet of luxury vehicles and millions of dollars. And as you can see, Zip made his exit in style. No matter what you think of him, you have to give him his credit for his longevity in the game, just like I said. I mean, listen to this. 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, 2010. And this game, man, you're lucky to even get a five-year run. Nowadays, I only see guys up for a summer. But of course, the game changed. There's really no money in the game right now. But for the ones that's getting it from the street or even getting it, you know, the nine to five route, make sure you take care of your kids, travel, take a lot of pics, create memories. You'll never know when the day is going to come to an end. It's June, man, and we're already halfway through 2023. Now, it's never too late to get on your grind. I appreciate everyone that's rocking with the channel, man. I look at y'all like a family. When I'm having a long day of work, I come home, chill, look at the comments, interact. I've been teaching and learning all from the comments. So again, I appreciate all of y'all. Y'all be safe out there, man. I'm out.